Uh, Alien, hope you're all doing good. What we're going to do today is uncover the truth from, of course, my perspective. Every video, for the most part, is my perspective on a subject. You can accept it or you can not view it. It's that simple. I say these words and then people take them for what they want not for what they are so it's not like my opinion really matters to a great degree so as i say these things i'll have all the evidence for my opinion on screen you have the right to state your opinion or hold your opinion whatever at this point my desire to debate this is is not there it, it's become a point that i don't really care anymore because we're fighting against ourselves because a lot of us generalized statements a lot of us, of us are trying to say generalized topics from a personal perspective which we all know everybody's situation is different or at least a little bit different now we live in a country that has a business on it that benefits from our ignorance. Everyone misinforms you. Some on accident, a lot on purpose because they either get a paycheck or they are a beneficiary of the system. Now, are these people that do it on purpose all one ethnicity? No. But they are confederate with each other. Yet, that doesn't mean they know each other. They have a common cause, a common goal. Now, Let's get started. When we talk about Native American and indigenous, and we discuss melanated people, where now you have variety of melanated people the ones with the afros where are their american creation story or myth now with the ability to see certain people have a creation myth and certain people don't this starts to make it easy. It doesn't have to be difficult. So, the Hopi and the Ant people. So, you have Hopi and the Ant people. And this is a Native American story, all right? Ah. Uh, so here's one over here. I'm just going to read it. It states many 
Native American people share a belief that, em that they emerged from the earth. This is the Hopi story. So this starts off that we believe, we, we excuse me, we lived beneath the earth, okay? And it came time for us to emerge. And it's, uh, oh, I skipped some, huh? I can't tell when the words come up, but here we met with the caretaker of the earth. Hopi and Pueblo traditions require that they honor Mother Earth by taking care of her. Okay, so as you can see, that's that's the story for the most part. Um, Fair use. Have you ever wondered about the intriguing tales of the ant people in Hopi mythology? Nestled in the high desert of northern Arizona, the Hopi Indians have spun a rich web of legends, central to which is the enigmatic narrative of the ant people. This tale unravels against the backdrop of multiple world creations and cataclysms, with each epic ending in a global upheaval. When such chaos reigned, the virtuous Hopi, guided by a cloud and a star, found refuge with the ant people in subterranean caves. This fascinating survival story emphasizes the celestial and spiritual elements deeply embedded in... So, <clears throat> they found refuge with ant people in the subterranean caves. Hopi lore. More than just an insect, <clears throat> ant people are symbolic beings embodying wisdom, resilience, and the profound connection between the celestial and the earthly. Thus, the ant people are pivotal figures in Hopi lore guiding the tribe through celestial signs and providing refuge during cataclysmic events. The Hopi's understanding of celestial phenomena is deeply interwoven into their mythology. In the heart of their lore, cataclysms symbolizing fire and ice unfold, possibly representing cosmic events such as solar flares, asteroid strikes, ice age glaciers, or polar shifts. It's fascinating how celestial bodies like clouds by day and stars by night guided the Hopi underscoring the Celestials' profound influence on their earthly existence. In the captivating legend of the Ant People, the Orion constellation assumes a special role. The Hopi draw a parallel between Orion's slender waist and the winter dwellings of ants, demonstrating a deep-rooted understanding of astronomy. Okay, so one should find it weird that ants are connected to astrology, okay? This celestial observation is mirrored in the design of the subterranean Hopi Kivas, aligning with the constellation's winter dominance. Intriguingly, there are linguistic parallels between the Hopi Anunnaki, meaning ant friends, and the Sumerian Anunnaki, hinting at shared mythological threads or a common understanding of celestial beings across diverse cultures. Thus, That's the celestial of, and the Earth That's kind of weird. Mm, right. are intricately intertwined in Hopi mythology, Anunnaki and ant people. Interesting. Reflecting a profound understanding of celestial phenomena, on an earthly level, the ant people legend symbolizes the resilience and adaptability of the Hopi tribe. Living in subterranean caves aided by the ant people during cataclysmic world upheavals, the Hopi community embodies survival in the harshest of environments. This narrative underscores the importance of communal support and the wisdom of learning from nature. You see what's right there? That image right there, okay, that's going to lead us to what they told us was the buffalo, but it's it's not the buffalo, it's the bison. And we'll, we'll get to this. See, this is the buffalo. It's the water buffalo. This is the bison. Does that matter? Yes. Yes, it does. Because <laughs> this, it, it, it does. Reflecting the Hopi's tenacity and resourcefulness. But the ant people legend is not an isolated tale. 
It intersects with narratives from other ancient cultures, adding depth and complexity to this rich tapestry. And this is why it matters. Consider the Babylonian sky god Anu, whose name echoes the Hopi word for ant. Or take Pharaoh Akhenaten of ancient Egypt, whose revolutionary monotheistic beliefs bear intriguing similarities to the Hopi worldview. These connections suggest a shared understanding of celestial beings across disparate cultures and time periods. They speak to the ant people legend. We find fascinating parallels and intersections with other ancient cultures, adding layers to this enigmatic narrative. The ant people in Hopi mythology beckon us to unravel the intricate connections between human beliefs. So, I think that's good there. And again, that leads us to the buffalo, the guar, and the bison. So, here we go into images and this is the American buffalo. Yes, it's important. This through images is the war. Now, hopefully you can see the the relationship with the horn. American buffalo, like Buffalo, New York, water buffalo. And this is the bison. You see how the bison grows are completely different, but you see there's a mis labeling. They say buffalo slaughter, but that's bison right there. Why is the bison important? because its face is very unique compared to the other animals, is that did that got that man face. You can almost see a smile there. Where does this animal come from? Well, it turns out the Hopi legend says it comes out of the ground with them. Now, this is what made me realize there are no Afro people that are Indian. From what I understand, again, I don't have every book on Indians. I haven't read every book that exists on Indians. It become pretty obvious. Now, one day, I was watching those TikToks compilation on YouTube. And they showed this video, and I will show it to you. And this video shocked me real hard. But I didn't understand, and it took some time for me to realize, okay? Now there's an a ant people, right? Brazilian interview indigenous. This is the search criteria I got. Brazilian natives identify aliens as underground creatures. Now, I was planning on doing a video. In the video, I was going to show like a compilation of these are all the different things, and what they label them is first creation, or the other title that they give them is pre. Adamites or pre adamic beings. Okay, so it doesn't matter if you believe it or not, they are got a category for it, so whatever. Now, when I was watching, um, I was getting an insect section because there's a, a, a history channel section on uh, insect be beings and shit. 
And it just so happened one of these TikToks was playing this at the time. And it's this video here. Now it states, again, Brazilian natives identify aliens as underground creature. What does this have to do with the Nazca mummy? Now, if you don't understand it yet, these people make the mummies. We do not. Now, if somebody goes and starts copying them, that's a whole different story. Now, I don't know how this is going to sound, but... Mario Shibu. Is it Mancunaldo. Mancunaldo. Mancunaldo is one who lives below the earth. Hey, what are you talking about? Yeah, the one that talked earlier. So let me, let me start this over. Let me just read this out. This is called... So they show him a picture of an alien. A little gray alien. He says, this is called Yoshibu. Excuse me, Moshibu. Now, take the M off and you got Yoshibu. Now, drop the, the B and you got what? That little green alien dinosaur from Mario, Mario Brothers and shit? The Yoshi? Now. This? Mancun Awaba. Mancun Awaba. Something like that. Mancun Awabu. It is the one who lives underground. Not up in the air. Not on different planets. See, this is... They just keep playing us because they practice theatrical warfare. That became an ant, and we call it Una. It's the big ant. We call it Manukiawabu. This ant is very dangerous. If a person is messing with it too much, it takes a person's spirit underground. To bring it back, you have to be a good shaman. They are beings that can appear in divine light. With the light of Nishipan. Now, Japan used to be called Nippon. And then you already know the little short being called Pan. Right? But Egypt's, Egyptians didn't call him Pan. I should. Oh, there's this girl that made a video. I shall show you in a little bit what this is. It's, it's, I can't remember the name of it right now. Divina, com a luz do Nishipan. São seres que vocês... They are beings that you... A gente pode ter o contato. That we can make contact. That live underground. Que moram debaixo da terra. So, there you have it, people. There you have it. So, look, I've been coming on for months not being able to express what all this is or how I even feel about it. They've shown you videos. There's a fake alien invasion coming. They're showing you uh, people in uh, hearing meetings saying that these crafts uh, aren't like the bee. See, the beans that are craft, they move like mercury into geometric shapes. But there's other craft that move like it's man-made built. Okay, so 
meant this is a sharing of technology, meaning like that thing said, somebody can contact these things. But if you play with them too long, they can take your ass underground, which means what? Hell. See, so that means there ain't no aliens. They all underground beings. I've stated this before. We live in a snow globe. How do you add water or anything to a snow globe underneath? This is God's fish tank. This is God's ant farm. We're in a container. They keep shooting rockets up to try to crack the container. So what? We all drown again? Idiots are in control of the in world. They're in control of the most dangerous weapons. And yet, they are very crafty at keeping us in a dumber state. Which it becomes very sad. There are no Pleiadians, there are no this, there are, they're all underground. Now, to say that they're the Pleiadians or this or that, weren't they building pyramids to worship these beings that lived underground? And didn't they build all their pyramid sets uh, to match the stars above? So whoever's building the Pleiadian pyramids are just building shit for beings that live underground. When they tell you as above, so below. If the beings that are above, if they start sinning, don't they lose their position in the great big clock? That's what it is. It's a giant clock. Stars don't move, they just rotate. One way, just like the sun, just like the moon. It's just a clock. And there's no alien. There are different there are other forms of Terrians. Earth Terra Terran. This gets us into the movie The Revenant. Keep not silent, thou silence, O Most High, O Almighty, O Ishiloha. Hold not thy peace, for thy, lo, thy enemies make a tumult. They that hate thee have lifted up their head. They have taken crafty counsel against the people. They have consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, come, let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name Israel be no more in remembrance, and that they be called Negroes and black people and African Americans and all kinds of stupid. Therefore, they have consulted together with one consent, and they are confederate. That's the Indians, right? The confederacy. Five lords of the Philistines. Two to five. Then they travel underground from their speaking of it and to what five lords of the confederacy to the five lords of the huh civilized tribe they can't get away from this five lord thing they love it love 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 and who is these uh, in, in edom and in moab and hagarines and gabal and amon and Amalek and the Philistine and the inhabitants of Tyr. I thought you said we we're going to look at the movie Revenant. Okay, so Revenant. Uh huh. So, hopefully, okay, okay, so uh, give a re movie review. Uh, as, as a movie, um, to see it once is, you, you know, scale one to ten. Can you give it a ten? No, I can't give it a ten. Can you express why you can't give it a 10? Not right now. Would you suggest watching it to other people? Yes, yes, yes. I would suggest watching it to other people. Uh, is it a thrill ride? Uh, no, it's a suspense ride. You know, it's how, it's, uh, it's how you feel about suspense. You know, I just leave it at that. So, um, it's the story of... Uh, the, the Song of You Glass from 1915.
okay, um, describes the Frontiers menu glass. So, very interesting movie. The things to take away from the movie that are important right now is they use this term. Now, there's only two Indians in it, okay, two Indian groups. It is a blessing to find all this stuff. It is the Pawnee, okay. That's the fly eaters, right? And the Arikara. Arikara are also known as the Sainish, the Ar Arikari, the Ri, or the Hyundai. You know that in car sitting outside in your neighbor's driveway? Okay, so this is where we get Hyundai from. Uh, they are, yes, that's your that's that's what is that like a japanese car or a chinese car maker right but you see right here they share that name isn't that weird we think the u.s government defeat the indians and start naming stuff after them but in fact they have treaties with the indians and then they start naming stuff after them it's a little different than how we perceived it before isn't it they put them on reservations, right? Let them stay a separate nation because why? The deal is they get to use land and they get to take custody of what? Us. So, what does it say? About the Arikari, all right? In the movie, they use the word tree nigger, right? It is a derogatory uh, slur, slang, it says right here, Native American person. Now, up up on top, on the dashboard, the word nigger is up here from Oxford Dictionary. And every time we open this, it say in there, like out of the whole page, it bring up Indian a lot. Now, by definition, if the Indian is being called the nigger and they were owning us and now they call us Negroes, Oh, I'm trying to use this and now you have to sign in and to use it and all kinds of things and I'm really shocked. Uh, so we'll just leave that alone. Um, there's plenty of other. Uh... And as you can see, there's a Wikipedia about it, right? Native American. Let's just continue from there. Now we're going to go over here to these Arikara or Arikari. Uh, Indians. Again, they are the Arikari, the Ri or the Hyundai from uh, Dakotas, but it says North Dakota now, right? And uh, horns, elk, people, corn eaters. Okay. Now, I was listening to this woman's video and I'll play it in a little bit. I don't necessarily with saying we're gonna hear that part, but when I heard her say tear or what we've been taught to call tear can be pronounced just like, because we're used to seeing Tyrese. And we'll call that man Reese. We'll call him Ty. But it's interesting. If we look at this, and it says, and the inhabitants of Tyr. But again, should we pre be pronouncing it the inhabitants of Tyree? Now, 
since the Philistines are Canaanites, the people of Tyre or Tyre, right? They are Sidon. So that's Canaan. That's Hamite. Now, in this film, they deal with this Ari Kari. Right? The movie Akira. Come on, people. Wake up. It's in our face. Why the Japanese, excuse me, why the Asian people name the car after the, the same name these people are? Hmm? Oh, it's backwards. Literally backwards. Akira. Now, nah, you want me to do one more? Remember when Saul fell on his sword? The act of falling of on your sword is called Harakari. Right? Almost Harikari, which kind of matches Ari Kara or Ari Kari. Remember, I tell you right here Ari Kari. We've got another Karen. And in the movie, they keep calling them the Re people. So I believe they are the Tyre, which would make them of the family of the Native Americans. This is why the name is used forward and back, forward over here. And in Asia, they write backwards from right, right, right? they write from right to the left. So it's just a word game, right? Why you got Arika, right? Arikara or Arika, which is still Erica, which is still Erica, which is still Jericho, which is still Arachium. It's, it's the same word patterns. I'm not even a lit language, I can't even, linguistics persons, whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I'm not out of my field. No, I'm in the lane I should be. But yeah, just because I can't express it correctly. Viewer discretion is advised. This was like one of the, I'm sure there's like a, better channels and stuff but this is one i i came across and i i, I just I, I loved every but every bit of everything that i i saw on here this told me exactly the mentality of the or, or the brutality of these wars going both ways but the pure horror movie was again the thoughts expressed amongst the army and amongst the settlers do not let them kill you or or they will they will they will they will desecrate your body based on their beliefs on the after afterlife now that is what is expressed in most of these videos and i tell you there was a dude Last month, he had many videos come out, one right after another. I, I think the videos came down because they're brutal. I mean, he's taking news articles and he's just reading them. And this is some brutal shit, so I could imagine... Only YouTube policy says that you can't tell the truth about how history was. Oh, shit. So, I got this one right here. Um, saying that, I probably shouldn't play this, but, uh, yeah, maybe we should skip that. 
but yeah, maybe look if you want to see it. Wild West face is one word, and I'm telling you, there was a bunch more videos, and and they're well worth listening to. I don't know what happened. I don't know if he made them private. I don't know if he they took he had to take them down, but you know. Plus, each of these videos that you open, they connect to other videos uh, on on this some of these subjects. Well, this one doesn't stay, but yeah, he had a lot more videos. I don't know what happened. Um, you know, uh, but oh, let's go for it. Give me a fair use of. Fair use. All right, fair use. We got the word uh, right to criticize us. When the emigrants organized, ready to travel to California, I was living at Huntsville and. Madison County, where I joined one of the parties known as Captain Boyd's Train. A man of the name of John Mankins, formerly of Marion County, joined the other party. He was a large man and bore the name of being quite overbearing and disagreeable. When he left Marion County to join the emigrants, he was living in the Flippin' Barrens between Yellville and White River. The two wagon trains, after starting, traveled together for a while but finally separated. Often they were ten miles apart. Before reaching the frontier, Mankins made many boasts that he would shoot the first of the Indian race he saw, be it man, woman, or child. The man repeated these threats so frequently after arriving on the frontier that the remainder of the party grew alarmed and tried to induce him to not to do so for fear the entire party would be massacred. Being a long-headed and don't-care sort of fellow, he paid no attention to their advice. Arriving at an Indian reservation, and while passing on, they reached an encampment where there were only a few women and children at camp, the warriors being away on a hunt. This gave the man an opportunity to carry his threats into execution, and he willfully murdered a squaw by shooting her. The other emigrants deplored the cold-blooded, wicked act of the heartless man. They knew the tribe would avenge the death of the woman. They traveled on with the expectation of being attacked every hour, but they were not molested until the fourth day after the woman was killed, when the emigrants saw a band of Indians coming in pursuit. They were all mounted on ponies and numbered 100. Each warrior was in full war paint. The emigrants were in camp some 10 miles from our train. The Indians came with a rush and without making a halt to parley, surrounded the camp and demanded the murderer, or they would kill and scalp all the members of the train, including women and children. The white men were well armed, and had made preparation for defense should the whole party be attacked. On the demand of the warriors, the leaders found that they were too small in number to resist the enraged Indians, even if they wanted to. Mankins had committed such a wicked murder that they had no sympathy for him, and they handed him over at once. The fury of the band rose to a high pitch, and they informed the white men that they were going to inflict one of the most painful tortures known to the murderer. The prisoner knew he was doomed to a terrible fate, and the trembling wretch begged and implored the white men to save him from the vengeance of the red men, but his pleading was in vain. He had brought it on himself, and he would have to pay the penalty that suited the desire and thirst of the warriors. The Indians took a rope off of one of their ponies, sixty feet long, that was made from the raw hide of buffalo, and bound the man head and foot to one of the hind wheels of a wagon. The Indians did not delay much time in preliminaries when they examined their knives to see that they had keen edges, and the awful scene of flaying a man alive began. They began at the neck and the man... Now listen, I'm playing this not because it's, it's gruesome talk. You must understand, or I'm asking the viewer to understand the connection to the Aztec sacrifices and other tribes that are accused of you know, Central South America as well of cannibalism and things like that. I, I, I literally just watched a video expressing this.
So again, you have to ask yourself if, as this woman did in this video that she made, it's, it's amazing. Uh, is this the, just listen, fair use. We've, we have the right to, to use excerpts of it to, as criticism, as news reporting, and to teach, as well as for, for research for our own benefits and the benefits of others. And blood was soon flowing little streams down his nude body, for they had stripped him of all his clothes. They slowly but surely took the skin from his entire body, not in small bits or strips, but whole. The awful torture was done in the presence of the white men. Mankin struggled and screamed in agony. His suffering was terrible and miserable. He begged, prayed, and cursed. The bloody work went on. The unbearable torture was continued. The man had cruelly murdered a poor defenseless Indian woman, and the tribe she belonged to were punishing him with the worst torture they could devise. The exultant Indians finished their horrible and painful work and gave a yell of delight. Their victim was still alive, but had become unconscious. They unbound him, and the bleeding, writhing form dropped to the ground where it lay quivering for an hour, when death put an end to life and further cruelty by the Indians. Not an Indian left until they were satisfied he was dead. They then mounted their ponies, and with war whoops they departed, carrying the human hide with them. Soon after the yelling warriors had passed from their view, the emigrants dug a grave at the spot where the dead body of the man lay, and gave it decent burial. They marked the grave as well as circumstances would admit. In an hour after the interment of Mankin's lifeless form, the party of white people took its departure from the place where the blood-curdling scene was enacted. All right, so let's stop there. Uh, in my opinion, you know, um, which is just one person's opinion, these stories are awesome because they tell you how things actually were in the past. You know, and, you know, when they say frontier justice, Not only does each ethnic group have their own personal description of what that is or should be, you know, um, the thing about this is these things were all written about. And as they were written about, everybody knew whose territory it was at this time, meaning exactly what tribe they knew whose tribe they were uh, trespassing on and this and that and who they would have to deal with and all that stuff and it's all documented in newspaper reports so you know if you want to know more about it you saw it was wild west uh wild west faces so then we go into Negro Indian tribes, right? And again, I hate to say it, all right, but this seems to be an oxymoron, all right? And here it is in Black Indians in the United States. And no, no matter what me and you think about Indians, the, the people that we assume are in control, already know that the Indians are basically the descendants of Mizraim, which would make them the Egyptian. So this is, yeah, man, it, it, we've been taught lies. That's it, that's it. You, you can think whatever you want. Black Indians redirect here for people with origins in both Africa and Indian, Indo-Africa, Blah, 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 blah. So, who are these Afro-Indians, right? Ethnically mixed. We don't have to go far with it. You can go as far as you want. I encourage you. There is no Afro-Indian. There are people mixed with Hamites, which make that person's branch part this and part that. 
that don't make you whole. There is no tribe that we can find. And I say these things and nobody really responds with anything. And yeah, you, you just type in these languages and it's going to show you. See, this is African languages down here, right? And then the Choctaw, you're, we had been with the Choctaw. We see that Dakota is the, the, the Tyree. <laughs> right? You know, you check all these yourself. We know the, the Louisiana Creole were brought in. We know the Gullah are Africans. The Afro Seminole aren't what you think. Spoken by Black Seminoles. You know what? This is it. No, that's not it. This is, I wasn't going to do this one, but I, I had it up with the Seminoles itself. So, again, Black Seminoles or Afro Seminoles are an ethnic group of mixed Native Americans. <coughs> so, it's not what we think. Okay, <clears throat> or not okay, however you want to do it. They are mostly blood descendants of the Seminole people that left the Seminoles. And again, if you look at the Seminoles, they're Hamites. Let's just satisfy the mind. Here's the Seminole. That is what they look like. Again, the black Seminoles are a mixture of these people, which would, again, these five civilized tribes one of them is the seminole indians right so how do you get seminoles leaving that and going with people that are brought from the slave trade love love will make you leave some shit. you have a child that child you realize it's precious. Your family members start making that, making fun of that child because that child don't look like everybody else. And at some point you say, okay, well, I'm going to leave with them. And they seem to have left and started a new tribe with the people that was formerly enslaved and or freed. And they were doing what? They started a whole new tribe. They are mostly blood descendants of the Seminole people and free people from the slave trade and escaped former slaves who allied with Seminole groups in Spanish Florida. Many Seminole lineage, many have Seminole lineage, but due to the stigma of having mixed origin. Hey man, again, on, on the friendship level, I don't, black people don't like me, very few do. White people don't like me, very few do. I got, I got a few people that are friends that don't play with those titles. I got a few people who are friends that don't call me black. <laughs> you know? But I have brown skinned people that are and tan skinned people that I'm friends with. I don't have any black, really any black or white friends. Everybody, for the most part, seems to be mixed. Here's the, the part the, the, the person that seems to think they're playing supremacy, there's a chance they could have mixed with the cabbage. Let me show you what all this means here in a minute. They have all been categorized as slaves or freedmen in the past. That's that's all. I don't, I don't want to do this because people we've been lied to. We've been lied to people that we form some kind of trust for. Listen, how many videos have I made? saying we, we the Indian and they stole our land. I think I meant well. But it doesn't seem to be true. It seems to be that some of us were freed. You choose the percentages based on your ancestry, not on your good 
in guess. And then some of us were enslaved when 1866 hit. Lincoln's death, end of the revolution, end of the Confederacy. And everybody's allegedly free. No papers needed. 1933 comes and we get the what? The birth certificate, which puts us all bondage. So, and that gets us back here to these Native American, part of the Native and American series, right? So, you know, part of the African American series. Think about what that what we saw with that Bible. See how dark it is right here on this river? They brought Psalms 83. We can match that with, with uh, excuse me, Psalms. Uh, the 137 match it with the Bible through the river of Babylon. We weaved at this tree. They either did that, and what did they say? This, 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 the Senate, they say the Seminole Indians is the one that was cutting our fingers off doing that shit. We made video, I made video after video saying, Look at this caucus person saying he's the, the, the Caucasian, the European, the, the Caucasus Mountain Caucasian, the, the European, the, the Indian taking all these different, what do they say, hats, wearing all these different hats. The same rules that we apply to them, we have to apply to ourselves. We cannot be the person that imprisoned us as a group. We cannot be the person that imprisoned us and the person that was in prison. Now, as an individual, what is this, the black symbol? There, half the people, half of their blood is of the population that was a slaveholder, and then the other half of that is the population that was enslaved. But that doesn't guarantee that every member of that tribe was a slaveholder. Does that guarantee that they was all beneficiary to it? Well, it depends on the rules of the tribe at the time. That's unanswerable from my position at this point in history. So, let's see right here, historically certain tribe have had a close relationship with African, they enslaved them. See, they're trying to water it down again, especially in regions where slavery was prevalent or where free people of color have historically resigned, uh, resided. So again, members of the five civilized tribe participated in holding enslaved African Americans in the Southeast and some enslaved or formerly enslaved pe people migrated with them to the West on the Trail of Tears. Ah, see? Now again, we did a Trail of Tears. Now this answers the reason why we have black Oklahoma Indians, right? The Cherokee and their slaves left. And they put, I would suspect that they formed one city called Tulsa and the other city because why did they strike gold in uh, the Osage, right? And, and, and right, it must have struck gold in Tulsa too. Then all those areas must be very, well, well, I, don't know, I, mean, I would assume, but that doesn't mean I'm right because I'm sitting in a fucking chair in a basement, keep that in mind. So yeah, man, this is what happens. And once we were freed, they're calling us Indians and I'll show you why. I will show you why, once we are freed, they're calling us Indians, and this should make sense of why we are called Negroes. Now, so I talked to Joseph, and he suggested looking at these words, and again, he's just brilliant, you know, um, 
the one person can't do this, you know, and, you know, I don't always agree with everything, but it's amazing what he comes up with. So I want to show you Bond. Well, he wants to show us Bond, anything that binds, fastens, or confines, phonetic variant of band. Uh, first, and at first interchangeable with it for vowel change, see long bone, see a householder, literally dweller. It preserves more distinct than band in the connection of bind or bound and is uh, in the sense of mis restraining or uniting force. Fourth century is agreement, covenant, binding or uniting power or influence as an instrument of binding one to pay a sum to another. Do you hear that? As an instrument. What are documents called with QCEP numbers? Instruments. It's right there, people. It's right there. Remember, these are Hamites, so they have a connection to Nimrod, right? The great hunter, all right? Who is the greatest hunter out of uh, the, the types of, right? The single, you know, I use a rifle to take down an animal, right? I use a bow and arrow to take down an animal, or well, we don't really leave the city because we're kind of bound to it. And what did it say? How are we we're restrained, right? We're city dwellers. Hmm. So that takes us to the word bondage. It's legal is the legal condition of a serf or a slave. A tenant. Farmer. See that? Now go into a little history. Oh my daddy was a what? A sharecropper? That's a tenant. Farm which is a serf or a slave, which means they in bondage. So that's how they kept us in bondage without what we have today, the, so the, the, the birth certificate. See, what they did was they crafted a different way to hold us in slavery. Householder, right? Free born farmer, but you're in in bondage. I mean, they taught the slave to think he was free, but he was his occupation would only be a farmer and nothing more. I hope you get it. If you don't, I I, I can't. It's, it's right there. Remember, we learned about Georgia was a royal slave colony, okay? Became a royal colony under direct control of the British government. Don't be fooled by any of this. This in place is a slave factory. In fact, it seems that it's a chattel slave factory. Fair use. Okay, so I don't trust anybody. I don't suggest anybody. We're going to look at a video by the research guy. I feel some people shadow other people's channel. Wink, 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 wink. And uh, make money for it. And uh, he did this video 10 months ago. And then what's changed? Some of the statements in here. I'm not going any further on any of this stuff because this is what it is. He, right? He seems he figured it out. And I go into his videos to see the follow-ups, and there's nothing. It's all this moonwalk. Now, either this is the most high wiping our minds all the time, and I and I could believe that. Now, we're gonna watch this. We, you can think whatever on the other. The other side of the scale of that sentence. Ten months later, nothing changed. I'm going to move forward. This video, 
I would like to critically analyze this part of the video. And if you'll dance with me, if you'll rock with me on this, I think we're going to discover something interesting. See, when we study Indians and we look at all this stuff, we can see everything's not as everyone says. Dress, if you will, the role that the U.S. government, this wasn't willy-nilly cowboys, you know, running wild. This was a U.S. government and its policies that ultimately bastardized, took away from, uh, stole from the Native Americans, mm -hmm. made treaties that ultimately were broken. You want to say willy-nilly? That's where willy-nilly came in. So if you look now, if you could. Pay attention to this man's features. I would ask the basic question. <clears throat> Does he resemble what we would say is what we've been taught to view European? Could he be mixed with European? No, he just said <clears throat> the government did this, the government that did that to the Indian. Now, listen right here. And I want you to see something else. Address that for me. Well, yes. And see, it started at one of the first treaties. Was, was it? There it is right there. This is good doctor. Does the good doctor seem to have phenotypes that looks like he might be mixed with an Indian tribe? Now, when we know the end of this is going to lead to one thing. The end of this is going to lead to the 1866 treaty for all these Indian groups. This is a doctor in this. This is a professional. Every professional in this should be like, the Cherokee have a treaty, the treaty states this. The Chickasaw have a treaty, the treaty states this. Because it's all at the end of slavery. It's all at the death of Lincoln. All freedmen who have been liberated, as well as all the colored persons who, who were in the country at the commencement of the rebellion. The Revolutionary War, whatever that is, or whatever, whichever war it was. And their descendants, that means everybody enslaved and their descendants enslaved by the Cherokee, shall have the rights of the native Cherokees. This man is supposed to be a professional. When do you see him on camera ever talking about any of this? See, this is... This is the root of it all. New York Treaty about, about 15, 16, they came in. That was one of the first treaties. But in every one of those treaties that they set up with the Indians, they put an inclusion in there saying this, that if you were to cooperate with us and be able to help us maintain the slavery system we set up in this country, you know, and we will reward you and compensate you. We'll give you, we'll give you clothing. We'll give you <clears> food. We'll give you weapons. So then why is the treaty with the government say that the Cherokee take responsibility for enslaving the people? Whoa, whoa, whoa. See now, this is what I mean. This is exactly what I mean. All these professionals on the subject, and none of them ever bring this up. No, he expresses, let's hear that one more time. Operate with us and be able to help us maintain the slavery system we set up in this. We set up in this country. He said the United States made deals with the Indians that the Indians helped them with the slavery system that they set up in. This. Is this doctor 
to say that the United States is and always has been the slave master. Is the doctor misleading us? Let's listen one more time with good, good ears. Let's put our good, good ears on. You would address that for me. Address, well, yes, and see, it started one of the first treaties was, was a New York treaty about, about 1516 that came there. That was one of the first treaties. But in every one of those treaties that they set up with the Indians, they put an inclusion in there saying this. You mean the clause? Every contract has a clause, right? We learned that from all those Hollywood videos about the clause. Mm -hmm. Every time they take the black man's money to get the black public upset, they say there was a clause and he was supposed to keep his composure under certain situations and he did not. What? Let's go back to the there we go. That if you were to cooperate with us and be able to help us maintain the slavery system we set up in this country, you know, and we will re- How do they help them maintain anything if they own reservations? What you and compensate you? We'll give you we'll give you clothing. We'll give you <clears throat> food. We'll give you weapons. Why would they give them any of that stuff when they're rich off the tree industry, rich off the fishing industry, rich off right slavery? Now I could imagine they made some kind of deal, which we'd have to just go to the treaty, that if you let us buy the slaves, see. This all makes sense when you sit there and say, Spain took Missouri and French wanted Missouri. French went to war with Spain. French won the war and Spain gave them the right to purchase Missouri. What? But they won, what do you mean purchase? America goes to war with Mexico, Mexico loses, America gets the right to purchase. What? What you mean, Park? You win, you get, you, that's yours, right? No. No, no. You don't understand these rules. Me neither. So what I think is they have some kind of, uh, let me take them off your hand give you a little paradise and then we'll do some kind of split or percent however the percentages is that's what i think what's really going on but that's my opinion now what's the real deal what's the problem with all this oh well again here's the problem right here on screen my bad now, this is the big secret. The Most High said he would do this to you. Told you, if you don't follow him, these people will come and this is what be the outcome. Now, we've become a mixed multitude. Nobody gonna tell you this. I'm going to show you. Are you Judah? Are you Ephraim? They took the girls this way. They took the boys that way. They took the men this way. Then women went that way. Come on, man. You can't say, you can say, you hold all you want. We the mixed multitude. Now, when the tribes have to lawfully pay the descendants of the slaves the most pious promised shall what be of the sand of the sea you shall black rabbits excuse me like gazelles and deer bambis so when the tribes have to lawfully pay the sand of the sea, right, that will break each of the tribes.
See, this is our duty to force them to acknowledge, which means we must do our ancestry. See, they don't have the right to hide the information. They have the right to spread the information out. So it's our duty to do our ancestry to find out which Indian group our family name belong to. And these are those roles, right? See, this is where it all pays off. Your own personal due diligence. So, again, this is what's going on in this article. Because the Indians enslaved us. Formerly owned, uh, held in bondage to the tribe. Do you understand what that means? The tribes aren't holding us. The government is holding us in bondage by the tribes, right? So this is what it's all about. Now the banks figured it out and the banks got in on it in 1933. What they do when they took us from the tribes? They put us in what? Special lands allotted for us. We call them downtown now. This is what it's all about right here. Now again, if somebody is held in bondage for another person, then they say what? We want our treaty assets. Now, the slaves were formerly owned by and held by the Indians. Now they're owned by and held by the banks. Back up a little bit. This goes into what? The Georgia Rolls. The Georgia tribe of East Cherokee. Enrollment and gene genealogy, right? Search the Dawes Rolls, George, this is the same one, Dawes Rolls again, Bureau of Indian Record, Affairs Records. This is what it's about. Not about anybody talking. Not what they say it is, what they say, unless they're giving you instructions on how to find your ancestry to prove which role you were on. Here you find your name on the roll, then you go to your ancestry and you try to find your way back to the roll. Ancestry to sign. That's what you got to do. Connect it. Because the tribes don't want to pay. Again. Excuse me. Let's, let's, let's talk sex. If the tribes at a rate and they make a percentage of the nation. Let's say they make up, oh, wait, we can just search, right? Let's say, okay, let me explain this to you, real simple mathematics. You and me and our ancestors was always supposed to be getting whatever the average citizen of the Cherokee or the Choctaw or whatever tribe owned our family was getting. So if the Cherokee got two, if the average Cherokee citizen never had to work and he, and because he he was rewarded because of slavery, right? And they built up their coffers, their their vault so big. He is oh right. He would get what? We bet we give each Cherokee a vehicle and a two thousand dollar, right? Well, whatever they did in eighteen sixty six, that day forward. That's the exact. That that that's what each slave is owed. Now, if you say. I've mismanaged this trust. It's a fucking trust. Because it's a treaty. 
And since 1866, I've owed, let's say, just one family for every year based on what the money was versus that year. And then that is that large number is then distributed amongst all the descendants of that family. Okay? Now, if they say each member of this tribe gets this money stipulation, and on these holidays we gave them this, and they gave them bonuses and shit, then that means that you, as the former descendant of the former slave, you get the same thing for each year that you were not given that same reward. Now, here's where the most high comes into play. Yeah, this shall happen to you, and you shall be as the sand of the sea. Now, how many people that are ex-slave descendants have went into the women of even other nations, so their children don't necessarily even have the but the by spitting into the valve, right? You you were able to find all this by doing your ancestry. You're able to find all this. Now you see. Now watch this. Now, what percentage of the U.S. is Native American? And they say millions, buddy, but it only makes up 2.9 percent. So that's just three percent. So let's say three percent of the country is Native American. Now. We're not even going to talk about the mixed multitude. Let's just talk about the people that think or, or believe that they are purely descendants of slaves intermixed over and over and over again amongst themselves. We know that's not what it is because the Bible says they tore our women to pieces and, and not literally sensually or yeah you know great right they say the black population is 14.4 percent now if you add all the mulattoes in sand of the sea like right sand skin my children look arabic one child got got purple like you got permanent mascara He's, he's a rock star, damn it. <laughs> it you, you, we are not understanding this from the most highest position. Now, what happens when the law, the tribes lawfully have to pay? When the 2.9% lawfully have to pay the 14.5. Let's just round it off. We're not even going to add the mixed multitude, the extra mixed multitude. What happens to the tribe's resources there? Anybody got a straw? A cup with a little bit of water in it? <laughs> this is what America is afraid of. This is the great Philistine secret. <laughs> so, why the mixed multitude? The uh, Most High talks about it also. Many times he talks about the mixed multitude. And what is that? What is the etymology say? Well, mixed is, of course, consisting of different elements or parts. Do I have to open up lamentations? They took the men this way, they took the women that way, took the boys this way, took the girls this way to never see each other again in that generation. What does it say? Right there in the streets, they ravaged the women. They raptured them. 
That means the next generation from those women, and there were no more women besides that, the next generation from those women were mixed. We read it, it said children of Zion. We know later it says daughters of Zion, and we have no idea why it says daughters of Zion. Now we do. To mix, to mingle, to blend. Not compromised of one class. Mixed breed. What is a multitude? A great number regarded collectively, whether it's a crowd or throng, whatever that is, the characteristic of being many and numerous. Are you comprehending this? No. Think about all those people that are mixed. They don't want, never want to associate with, with us until what? Money's involved. I will sow Judah with what? Behold, the day is come, saith the issue, that I will sow the house of Israel with the house of Judah, with the seed of man, with the seed of beast. We're right in between here. That's where we are, right there. See that dot right there? See that little blinkies? should be blinking right now right like I'm on an old Mac hey this is where we're at and this is why I say there ain't no Negro people that say they Indian talking about no creation stories only the people that been here for fucking ever can tell you those are not aliens those are ant people and they live under the ground we used to live with them that's how we got here I respect that people have beliefs. I respect that people do not want to be acknowledged as descendant of the slave. I understand that there are people that were never enslaved and came over and mingled with the, is the Indian and they look Negro today, but this ain't your story. Unless you do your family history, that's the only way you know if you descend from the slave era. If you keep letting people tell you how it is and what it is, you're going to keep running around in the same circles. Now, if our four parents were enslaved, and then they view themselves as Indians because what the law stated. Eh, what? What does the law say? One more time. That all descendants of this madness that were enslaved uh, shall have the right, same rights as the tribes that enslaved them. This so. This is why our people were calling ourselves Negroes, because what were they calling the people in the movie? There was no black people as a tribe in that movie. They were calling them tree niggers. The definition, definition keep going back to Native American. We're only being called Negroes because they owned us. Many groups, listen, I know this is embarrassing to say, hey, I'm a descendant of a slave. But once you understand the real story of it, all these different groups of people had to think about this. Nation after nation after nation had after nation after nation after nation after nation had to put all their grievances aside just to stand up to me and you. So, I mean, think about that. They couldn't do any of this on their own. No, no. They had to go to beings in the earth to be able to defeat one measly group. I mean, how measly could we be? 
this is this is telling the most high has rejected us for a period and these people still shake at how powerful we seem to be and not know they tell their daughters do not mate with these people yet they instill so much fear in their children they still be friends with us and then friendship leads to all these other things we are a mixed society so again our both or all three cultures are going to spill on to each other so you know and that gets us to the word uh miss miss Gener okay miscellaneous generation right this is right you got the word miscellaneous and you got nation but it's gene overlapping nation and then it's called miscegenation miscegenation well, that, again man sexual relations or reproduction between people of different ethnic groups especially when one of them is white and i don't think the color really matters but it's what they classify as western laws so that's why right <laughs> but again so this is, there's laws against this right Somebody said, we're going to put laws again. Behold, the days come, saith the Ishi, that I will sow the... I said, yeah, man, you don't got no choice in this. It's about the children you produce and the children they produce. You don't have any choice in this. I will sow. I thought that was your penis. I thought that was your vagina. I thought you make these choices. I will sow the hot again. We're like little chess pieces moving around. We don't even see it. Me, I feel like a chess piece hidden underground. Hmm? Look at this. I will sow the house of Israel with the house of Judah. I will sow that what production with the seed of man. Why? Because they were what? spread out and divided to four corners and 11 different nations came and set up in america and this is where the all, all the action happens at right what is what do you say this is this nation all the sexual relations is where the, all the action happens see you guys try this shit in other countries and they end up dead. Some guys try it here, they end up dead. Huh? You think you're doing it. It ain't got nothing to do with you. And why do we end up hurt when we do it? Oh, well, because you're supposed to set an example. On the darker end, it's more taboo. Don't do it or they'll kill you. On the lighter end, some people will say, oh, that's justified. But some people with daughters will say, look, man, I don't think this should have happened, but you sure shouldn't have did that. And then what comes later down the line? Huh? She have a child. They witness what they did. To them, and then, oh, just, right now we in 20. Uh, fucking, 24, right? a lot of what? Misgeneration. What are the few pronounces is going on? Hmm? So, what percentage of Americans are mulatto? Hmm? Black and Indian biracial adults account for 12%. Oh, oh man, do you see this? They don't want to talk about it, black and white. 
while those with white, oh, I gotta click on it to find out more. It's called the Pew Research Center. Like Pew Pew, like they're gonna shoot us. My God, who names their shit that, right? What percentage of American are biracial? 10%. So now, if one person could lead the black Americans, uh, minus the rulers, and the biracial Americans, what are you, why, 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 why would you even say some stupid shit like that? They keep taking your fucking videos down for trying to influence people for shit. Goddamn, dude. I'm wrong with you. I was gonna say. Whoa, what a part I'm just playing. <laughs> so, there we get into marginalization, right? Because that's what's a miscegenation. As soon as you make some mixed children, some biracial children, they become marginalized, right? After treating a person or a group as though they're insignificant or isolating, right? Or disempowering them, or disenfranchising them. Right? It's interesting, isn't it? Charlie Brown Thanksgiving came up, right? And like, noticed why, like, Franklin's on the side of the table by himself and all the other Charlie Brown characters are not on his <laughs> is Franklin being marginalized so the more <coughs> we read about these people everybody's eh, we've got a Bible scripture or a chapter that is dear and near to their heart and although I'm being a little fake theatrical with it, or shitty theatrical, like however you want to look at it, uh, I did, I have been reading and I came across, uh, I came across something I truly delight and I wanted to share it with you. We, we, we always do a lot, a lot of negative stuff, right? There's negative Nancy in it, and it's, and it, yeah. So let's look at something a little on the lighter side, maybe this will help some people. Maybe it won't. You know, maybe it's just like I want to hear this part. You know, maybe you're just here for the Bible verses. You know. So in Psalms 25, all right, let's go. Unto thee, O Ishi, do I lift up my soul. O my Elohim, I trust in thee. Let not, let me not be ashamed. Let not mine enemies triumph over me. Yea, let none that wait on thee be ashamed. Let them be ashamed which transgress without cause. Show me thy ways, O Ishi. Teach me thy paths. Lead me in thy truth and teach me. For thou art great, the Eloah of my salvation. On thee do I wait all the day. Remember, O Ishi, thy tender mercies and thy loving kindnesses for they have been ever of old remember not the sins of my youth nor my transgression according to thy mercy remember thou me for thy goodness sake o ishi good and upright is the ishi therefore he teach sinners in the way excuse me therefore will he teach sinners in the way the meek will he guide in judgment and the meek will he teach his way all the paths of the issue are mercy and truth unto unto such as keep his covenant and his testimonies for thy name's sake o ishi Pardon mine iniquity, for it is great. What is he that feareth the issue? He shall, 
him shall he teach in the way that he shall choose. His soul shall dwell at ease, and his seed shall inherit the earth. The secret of the Ishi is with them that fear the Ishi, and he will show them his covenant. Mine eyes are ever toward the Ishi, for he shall pluck my feet out of the net. Turn thee unto me, and have mercy upon me, for I am desolate and afflicted. The troubles of my heart are enlarged. Oh, bring thou me out of my distresses. Look upon mine affliction and my pain, and forgive all my sin. Consider mine enemies, for they are many, and they hate me with cruel hatred. Oh, keep my soul and deliver me. Let me not be ashamed, for I put my trust in thee. Let integrity and uprightness preserve me, for I wait on thee. Redeem Israel, O Eloha out of all his troubles shall I end.